Mapping Ararat, an imaginary Jewish homelands project, is a collaborative digital art and humanities work in progress that is supported by a social science and humanities research council insight development grant. This project reanimates Mordechai Noah's bold 1825 plan to transform Grand Island, New York into Ararat, a city of refuge for the Jews. As you probably know, Grand Island is located in the Niagara River near Buffalo, or just about one hour or so down the road and over the border. Utilizing digital media technology such as augmented reality as well as the construction of an interactive virtual world, this project gives Noah's Ararat the chance to become the Jewish homeland that its founder had envisioned. Mapping Ararat combines historical research, parahistorical speculation, new digital technologies, and artistic creation to image and imagine Mordechai Noah's vision in and for the 21st century. This image at the imaginary intersection of Noah Boulevard and Zipporah Phillips Street offers a first example of how we are able to transform the everyday landscape of Grand Island today with the help of digital technologies. In this way, augmented reality overlays Maya-rendered computer-generated graphics onto the real world. Mapping Ararat generates those elements that forge and constitute in a symbolic manner the signs and landmarks of an autonomous Jewish homeland and state on the banks of the Niagara River. So who was Mordechai Noah? Well, Major Mordechai Manuel Noah, 1785 to 1851, was the most prominent American Jew of his era. This larger-than-life personality corresponded with four presidents, and he once held a diplomatic post as counsel to the Kingdom of Tunis in North Africa during the James Madison administration. Based in New York City for most of his career, he was a leading Tammany Hall politician, a successful playwright, a major newspaper publisher, and a visionary who was the first person to propose the creation of an autonomous Jewish homeland in modern times. He called it Ararat, given his Noah complex. According to the Bible, Mount Ararat was the resting place for Noah's Ark after the flood. Mordechai Noah thought that his new homeland could serve the same function for Jews around the world faced with anti-Semitism and religious persecution. To create a world out of just one stone, that is our aim in mapping Ararat. Here you see the actual 300-pound cornerstone ordered from Cleveland, Ohio, that was part of the proclamation ceremony held at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Buffalo on September the 15th, 1825, to inaugurate Ararat. It is the only relic remaining from Mordechai Noah's ambitious endeavor to create a Jewish homeland on Grand Island, and it is currently housed at the Buffalo and Erie County Historical Society, where we made a pilgrimage at the beginning of our researches. A review of the workflow for the cornerstone illustrates how it moves from an historical object into the realm of augmented reality. Here is the drawing that was found in a book dated from 1841 that shows the obelisk that was constructed to house the cornerstone as a mid-19th century tourist attraction. And we even know from historical evidence that President John Quincy Adams disembarked to see it on a sightseeing trip in 1843. This drawing was then rendered in the 3D modeling program Maya. Then it was inserted into the Grand Island landscape using the Hapala augmentation program. Finally, with a smartphone in hand, a visitor sees the monument on Grand Island in its augment form using the software application Layar. In this way, Mapping Ararat has restored the cornerstone to become a tourist attraction for a digital era illustrated here in the visit to Ararat by the president of the Grand Island Chamber of Commerce, Jim Sharp. Starting from this real digital, excuse me, from this real historical artifact, 
our project moves into more speculative and para-historical realms to pose the counterfactual question, what if? How might the course of Jewish history turned out differently if Ararat had been able to survive and to thrive? Mapping Ararat exposes viewers to the contingencies of history by plotting a virtual history that plays out this what-if scenario on the Ararat path not taken. Here you see the Ararat flag. In illuminating this alternative trajectory of modern Jewish history, we are recalling that history is a construct of political desires and wills, which could have turned out quite differently. In this light, mapping Ararat builds upon the runes of an idea and an ideal that failed in modern history, but that we want to play out in an alternative universe accessible through augmented reality, virtual cartography, and the creation of what we call vernacular cultural artifacts. In this way, mapping Ararat uses digital technologies such as augmented reality to activate and to conjure the Jewish ghosts haunting Grand Island and its history. In the literary genre of historical fiction, there have been a number of recent attempts by notable Jewish writers, such as Philip Roth in The Plot Against America, or Michael Chabon in The Yiddish Policeman's Union, to carve out an alternative Jewish homeland or even a parallel universe. And let us not forget that Nava Semel, the Israeli author, recently applied this principle to the case of Ararat itself in her Hebrew novel, Isra Island. Mapping Ararat acknowledges these literary precedents, but it carves out new terrain as it plots its historical fiction by other audio-visual means with the use of interactive digital media in general and augmented reality in particular. Thus, the AR walking tour is not only a visual experience, it also contains a soundscape that consists of historically based and fictionalized texts. And here, we're going to show you a first example of how we animate our flag with a soundscape. Noah was, without a doubt, the first person who attempted, indeed, to achieve the idea of a Jewish state. Professor N. M. Gelber. You'll be seeing a longer clip uh, at the conclusion that will uh, feature many, a number of augments uh, in, in a multimedia presentation. This is the second historical artifact that is pivotal, pivotal to mapping Ararat and that underscores the cartographic aspect of the project. It shows us the map of Grand Island that was published in Burr's Atlas of the state of New York in 1829. Now you will notice that it lists Ar Ararat spelled with three R's as an actual geographical location. This map and its placement of Ararat on the northeast side of the island has enabled us to root our imaginary Jewish homeland and our augmented reality walking tour in actual history. In other words, we are utilizing this area on the map as the site of our AR walking tour. This area is now known as Whitehaven, and it is actually the home today of Grand Island's Holiday Inn. And you saw the Holiday Inn behind the flag waving in the uh, short clip. As you see here, this map also serves as the topography of the virtual world component of the project. Virtual Ararat is an interactive cartographic landscape that sets up a 3D world within a gallery installation using the gaming software program Unity. This enables the participant observer to chart his or her course through the map using a joystick similar to those used in interactive video games. The final results of our research and artistic production will be disseminated through the following digital media platforms. An augmented reality walking tour, a virtual cartographic installation, and a website linked through social media. In this way, Mapping Ararat offers new opportunities for knowledge mobilization in the field, in the gallery, and online. In addition, we are creating a number of cultural artifacts that functions as simulations of statehood, as we call them. Here you see the money that we're producing. 
We also are producing flags, stamps, etc. Now, let us review these components in greater detail by outlining some of the key concepts that inform the project. And Melissa will take it over for part two. Okay, let's swap. Okay. Augmented reality and virtual Jewish tourism. Each of the augments that one encounters on the walking tour may be viewed as an electronic monument, building, or landmark. The next example parallels the cornerstone monument, given that it has basis in history. This augment is based on an 1875 drawing of Mordechai Noah's gravestone that has been inserted into Grand Island's Whitehaven Cemetery. This is a decidedly Christian cemetery at the epicenter of where Ararat would have been, according to Burr's atlas. With this transplantation, we have repatriated Noah's gravesite and relocated it from New York City to our imaginary Jewish homeland of Ararat, because this is where we think it belongs. In doing so, we've also converted an actual monument into an electronic monument. Mapping Ararat draws upon the work of the digital cultural theorist Greg Ulmer, who invokes the idea of, quote, electronic monumentality, close quote, as the way by which commemoration reemerges in the contemporary virtual public sphere. Whether constructing a virtual synagogue or a port of entry, these augments bear witness to and fulfill the need for a public recognition of the Ararat alternative. Such an AR tour allows for a site-specific use of the technology in order to advance both, both the pedagogical and artistic ends of the project. This image allows one to view the plotting of our augments as points of interest through the use of the Hopala content management system. It also provides some orientation about the flow of the tour that starts with our port, port of entry by the dock in front of the Holiday Inn and then proceeds moving north from there. There are 16 augments that we've created thus far as part of the augmented reality walking tour. When completed, there will be a total of 25 visual attractions and each of them will have an accompanying sound file. Augmented reality generates a new form of virtual tourism that brings cyberspace back into real space. On our augmented reality walking tour, Tourists often divine for the augments by waving their iPhones or iPads in a figure eight motion until they're tracked down and pop onto the screen when they are full, fully registered. The, the screenshot function of the LAR program enables a type of virtual photography that allows users to pose with the augments that are superimposed into real space, onto real space. In this way, they are able to document their interactions with the Ararat artifacts or monuments that have been inserted into the Grand Island landscape. This screenshot function also allows for the circulation and distribution of these tourist shots to both friends and family via email or posting them to social media websites. The virtual tourist images that are shot in Ararat are linked to the countless images of tourists documenting their visits to exotic places, heritage sites, and historical landmarks around the world using snapshot photography. They are also closely akin to the tradition of humorous fabricated photo photographs staged in photo studios where people playfully pose with props as if they are flying in an airplane or driving a car. Let us recall that this playful as if element is at the root of the positing of any counterfactual history. The superimposition at the crux of the screenshot also bears a direct relationship to the practice of photomontage and its contestation of photographic truth, and it also recalls photomontage's often biting sense of humor. In this particular postcard, one sees a comic image of London, Trafalgar Square, as if it were Venice. The principle played out here is quite similar to our own imaginary Jewish homeland that sees Grand Island as if it were Ararat. The AR walking tour transforms participants into actors, photographers, and directors 
who become immersed in getting just the right shot and in framing their screenshots in order to give the illusion of realism and to capture the reality effect. For example, the photographer asks the tourist in this screenshot to pose in a way so that it seems as if he is reading the inscription on the Ararat cornerstone uh, when he is actually looking at nothing at all. This image serves as a visual enactment of virtual history or what history looks like when it has been written in an alternative universe. There is a large culture industry that has grown up around Jewish heritage sites over the past years. Some tours are designed to introduce North American Jews to those places in Eastern or Central Europe from which their ancestors immigrated or where there was a vibrant Jewish cultural and religious life before the Holocaust. The ghosts invoke in these prepackaged tours review the nostalgic traces of major Jewish diasporic cultures in European centers, for instance, the ghettos of Prague or Venice, or in the Eastern European shtetls. In addition, there are also sobering and somber Holocaust tours of concentration camps that offer pilgrimages to highly charged sites of death and horror haunted with evil spirits that serve as memorializing functions. These tours often help to define Jewish identity in terms of past victimhood, and they set up a narrative where the ultimate destination and destiny is identification with the land of Israel and Zionist nationhood. Other Jewish heritage tours go to Israel directly in order to affirm the Holy Land as Jewish homeland and nation state. In contrast, our Ararat augmented reality walking tour stands at the dawn of a new era of virtual Jewish tourism. This image mimes the typical tourist information center that one finds on any road trip, but while there's a big blue tourist information, uh, big blue gold sign, there is no referent here. Ararat virtual tourism moves from the historical to the imaginary and from the affirmation of real space to the deterritorializing imperatives of cyberspace. It transports tourists to the nondescript, non-place of Grand Island for a participatory and interactive experience where one playfully activates and conjures the imaginary Jewish homeland of Ararat. This playful activity stands in stark contrast to the morbidity invoked by the Holocaust tour that subjects the tourist to passive abs absorption of the horror. The, the site-specific nature of the tour also resembles a treasure hunt as participants receive a map that marks the places where they must search for and find the augments. Each thumb size nail icon has been created from a bird's eye view render of the 3D model of Maya model. Please take notice of the purple rectangle that details the exact location on Grand Island Ararat where our tour is sited. This is also very different from most academic uses of augmented reality that involve the reenactment of events or the reconstruction of historic settlements, having their basis in things that actually existed. In contrast, mapping Ararat occupies a more hypothetical space given, given that it speculates and extrapolates from a proposal that never came to fruition. The construction of the Ararat Synagogue offers a good case study of this mode of extrapolation in that it is based on architecture, architectural designs in upstate New York as well as synagogue designs in New York at the edge, at the edge of the 18th, sorry, synagogue designs in New York uh, City from the same foundational period. Sorry, I skipped a line. Coincidentally, the synagogue is sited at the edge of the 18th green of the River Oaks golf course in Grand Island, meaning that worshipers have to watch out for flying balls. <laughs> this provides another example of the surreal superimpositions that can ensue when creating virtual Jewish tourist attractions on the augmented reality walking tour. Okay. The next section is on divining the Jewish ghosts of Grand Island. 
in posing this, this uh, parallel universe, Ararat's electronic monuments conjure the Jewish phantoms that are haunting the contemporary landscape of Grand Island. We take the view that augmented reality is a fantastic and phantasmatic medium, one that opens up alternatives in which we encounter the ghosts and specters of things that might have been or that might still be yet to come. Here, the mobile camera phone functions not as a transparent window on the world or as a mirror reflection, but rather as a spectral refraction that points to paths that were not taken but that are still haunting the scene. This is the gravestone of Rebecca Noah, who was Mordechai Noah's wife and therefore the first lady of Ararat. If Ararat had taken off, there is no doubt that she would have been buried near her husband. In mapping and plotting the spectral realm of Ararat and in exposing its Jewish ghosts, ghosts, we draw upon the writings of Jacques Derrida and such concepts as hauntology, our being as a being haunted, and spectrality. This latter concept is discussed at length in Derrida's interview with Bernard Stiegler in Spectrographies, which offers a fascinating account of how contemporary media technologies function as sites for spectral encounters. As we chase after and hunt down these augments of haunted and haunting synagogues and gravestones, we are cast in a limbo that wavers somewhere between presence and absence. And we are reminded of this passage that traces how the present is always already haunted by absence. Derrida writes, a specter is both visible and invisible, both phenomenal and non-phenomenal, a trace that marks the present with its absence in advance, end of quote. In the case of Grand Island, it is a present that is haunted by the absence of the Jewish presence that would have occurred if Noah's plan had been instituted and if history had gone in a different direction, one that had followed the trajectory of Burr's Atlas of 1829. One should also note that the Ararat walking tour uses GPS coordinates to locate the augments and as the means of their registration in real space. Rather than relying on the tangibility of using QR codes or other material markers in the landscape, the use of this invisible technology also highlights another spectral aspect of the project. The Eden Isle Cinema serves as another augment in progress that offers further commentary and speculation about the haunting of a Jewish presence that might have been. The cinema takes its cue from the fact that Mordechai Noah was an accomplished playwright and man of the theater. Here we imagine that Noah's 1816 play, The Wandering Boys, would have been adapted for the silver screen in the mid 20th century. The marquee, if you read, lists the names of the people involved with the production. Bernie Schwartz as the star, Leonard Schneider as the screenwriter, and Maxwell Aronson as the director. These are the birth names of celebrities before they assimilated and Americanized their names in order to succeed in Hollywood. One wonders if there would have been the need to change their names to Tony Curtis, Lenny Bruce, and Bronco Billy if these filmic specters had lived in the Jewish homeland of Ararat. Der Derrida then goes on to link spectrality with mourning, reminding us that it is, quote, the work of mourning, in a sense, which produces spectrality, end of quote. This idea also resonates with the Jewish ghosts that one encounters or imagines on the AR walking tour of Grand Island. For the augmented reality walking tour is founded in part on the remorse and regrets over the loss of the alternative Jewish homeland that might have been. Experiencing these apparitional augments in such a site-specific and embodied way exposes the affective power of the project as well as its poignancy. In this way, the Mapping app, Ararat mobile app stages both a sentimental journey and a moving experience.
However, we do not want to give only the impression that our project has the actual foundation of a Jewish state on Grand Island as its goal either. If that were the case, then the ghosts would no longer haunt us, having settled into something more fixed and permanent. Therefore, it is important to linger and tarry with the unheimlich quality of Grand Island's Jewish ghosts, the unsettling, uncanny, and unhomey aspects that are opened up by the augmented reality walking tour and by virtual Ararat. In this way, the Ararat synagogue remains on the level of a ghostly mirage, despite the level of detail that has been devoted to it in its rendering. This is witnessed in the synagogue plaque that recalls Noah's words from the proclamation ceremony regarding the children of Israel's imagined destiny in Ararat. The augment reads, to him who shelters and protects the whole family of mankind, the great omnipotent and omnipresent God, do I commit the destinies of Israel and pray that he may have all in his safe and holy keeping. Amen. Given that the thrust of this digital arts and humanities project is the playful positing of an alternative Jewish homeland in Ararat, it is not surprising to learn that it was selected as one of the projects for the Where To exhibition curated by Udi Edelman at the Israeli Center for Digital Art in Halon last spring. This was a group exhibition featuring the artist Michael Bloom as well as Yael Bartana among others that allowed artists to explore and imagine possible roads not taken for the establishment of a Jewish homeland in light of the contested circumstances of the present. To cite the curatorial statement, quote, through the exhibited works and the historical materials gathered for the exhibition, we suggest reintroducing those forgotten currents and ideas to the public discourse, bringing the losers of history to the center of the stage and once again presenting the question of Jewish existence as a current problem that remains unsolved." Close quote. In a political landscape full of anxieties about the sustainability of Zionism based in the Holy Land or critical of its abuses of power in relation to the Palestinian population, it is easy to see why the Mapping Ararat project would resonate in Israel among post-Zionists and others seeking political and aesthetic alternatives. And you see how the curators selected our virtual synagogue as their online banner for the entire exhibition. By recalling the 1825 plan for the Jewish habitation of this space on the border between the United States and Canada, Mapping Ararat reopens the debate over the proper, improper place for Jews to be at home, Hamish, as they say in Yiddish, or to be in exile, unheimlich, or unhomey, as they say in German. Moving beyond the territorial imperative, Mapping Ararat responds to the ongoing dislocations of diaspora that are part and parcel of much of Jewish history, before and even after the establishment of the State of Israel to imagine Ararat as a viable place to locate virtually in a digital era. In other words, mapping Ararat responds to Jewish diaspora as the no place not to be found in physical or real space by exploring the utopian potential of augmented reality and cyberspace. As such, our virtual Jewish homeland recalls the Greek etymology of utopia as no place. In this way, Mapping Ararat engages with the figure of Jewish diaspora as that of the dispossessed people of the book who have been subject to the experience of dislocation and whose homeland can only be inhabited in the virtual realm of cyberspace. How fitting then that we are in the process of constructing a Lost Tribes bookstore augment that will serve as one of the cyber cultural centers of Ararat where we plan to hold book launches and guest readings. Mapping Ararat therefore exposes the close connection that exists between Jewish diaspora and digital media. 
In such a scenario, augmented and virtual reality become the belated yet natural home and homeland for uprooted, persecuted, and exilic Jews unable to establish Noah's dream of a Jewish autonomous region on the banks of the Niagara in this Canadian-American border zone. The coupling of digital media and Jewish diaspora deterritorializes the concept of Jewish homeland, now properly located, dislocated in cyberspace. Yet, from another perspective, mapping Ararat demonstrates how all homelands are, are con constituted by and embroiled in the realms of the imaginary and the virtual. Whether the case at hand is Great Britain, Ireland, the United States, Canada, India, or Pakistan, mapping Ararat forces reflection and speculation about the ways in which we inhabit our real homelands as imagined, imaginary, and symbolic constructions. In addition to this, we are reminded that the staking out of homeland functions as an act of appropriation that necessarily displaces and dislocates others. In the case of Ararat, this is no exception. We need to acknowledge the prior history of the Seneca nation in this location and the necessity for their dislocation and or assimilation in order to, for this place to become Noah's refuge for the Jews. This helps us to gain further insight into Noah's belief that the North American Indians were the lost 10 tribes of Israel and his desire to incorporate them as such into Ararat, thereby giving a romantic twist to a narrative that could be viewed as a story of the colonization of an Aboriginal population otherwise. Of course, this was a convenient way for him to not have to deal with the thorny issues related to colonization. In response to Noah's assimilation narrative, one of, the, one of our augments imagines what might have happened if the Seneca had built a casino on Ararat, not unlike the actual Seneca Ni Niagara Casino that exists in Niagara Falls today. <laughs> what we've come up with is the Red Jacket Kosher Casino and Spa. One recalls in this context the historical presence of Chief Red Jacket who led the Seneca tribe in Noah's day and who attended the Ararat proclamation ceremony. Furthermore, we are planning another augment on the walking tour to foreground the more troubling aspects of the Aboriginal question and to raise the Native American ghosts that are haunting Grand Island as well. In this particular case, we are proposing to place an augment of a native Seneca longhouse next to an actual historical plaque in Whitehaven that commemorates Noah's Ararat plan that was placed by the town of Grand Island in 1978. In this way, one can begin to conjure a parallel Aboriginal world. Okay. Our last section, five about Ararat ver uh, vernacular cultural artifacts. Another facet of mapping Ararat involves the production of parahistorical artifacts that are common to all modern nation states, whether money, flags, postcards, or newspapers. Now we would like to demonstrate some of Ararat's vernacular culture that we have produced via digital means. In this aspect of our project, we are engaged in what we are referring to as simulations of statehood, as we assume and mime the emblematic symbols of national authority and power. This strategy is quite similar to Yao Bartana's recent work and the founding of the Jewish cultural renaissance movement in Poland, featured in her video trilogy, And Europe Will Be Stunned, that was Poland's entry at the last Venice Biennial. The JCRMP seeks nothing less than the diasporist return of three million Jews to Poland. Bartana's series of works promotes the power of the imagination and moves art into the realm of direct political action. Her elaborate staging of the JCRMP includes all the trappings of a political movement with original flags, banners, pins, etc. In fact, 
our Ararat flag was displayed next to the JCMR, uh, or the JCRMP flag, as well as mid-20th century Jewish territorialist Joseph Otmar Hefter's Nye Judea flag at the entrance to the Where To exhibition at the Israeli Center for Digital Art. The Ararat flag provides another example of how the artifacts occupy different visual registers. In other words, our peace-loving flag with its symbolic dove that alludes to the biblical story of Noah's Ark not only exists as part of the augmented reality walking tour, but also has been printed as a material object of Ararat vernacular culture. We also knew that if Ararat is to be considered an autonomous entity, it required its own banking system and currency. Therefore, one of our first tasks was to design a dollar bill and to go into the business of making money. We based our design on the first American dollar bill made in 1862, but obviously we made significant departures. For instance, the central motif of the Ark was taken from the masthead of the New York Inquirer, of which Noah was publisher and editor. In this case, we, we remove the American flag that would have been on the bow of the boat. The portrait of Noah is based on a miniature watercolor on ivory at the Smithsonian Museum that you saw earlier at the beginning of the lecture. It has been transformed here into a line drawing inset into the shape of Grand Island, Ararat. For the verso of our dollar bill, one notices the signature of the cashier, Judah Benjamin. In our alternative history, this prominent Southern Jewish leader would not have joined the Confederacy, but would have become Ararat's Secretary of the Treasury. Finally, we based our drawing of the New Jerusalem Mill on the 1834 historic watercolor of the Whitehaven Mill that was situated very close to our port of entry. It's up to you. All right, postcards. Postcards, final section. Another area of Ararat vernacular culture involves the production of postcards from different periods or layers of history. This one mimes the traditional genre of the Jewish holiday greeting card that was very popular at the beginning of the 20th century. The original design has been altered in Photoshop to better fit with the signs and symbols of our alternative Jewish homeland. Here we're also dislocating the myth of the new immigrant arriving at the port of Ellis Island in New York, or Pier 21 in Halifax, with an image of a family of Eastern European Ashkenazi um, immigrants landing on the golden shores of Ararat in search for a better life. One can imagine these immigrants passing through the Ararat port of entry. Another genre of postcard is linked to the commemoration of important national events in the case of Ararat, we've designed a postcard to celebrate the golden anniversary of its founding. You'll notice how by 1875, there's another settlement on the west coast of the island, Rebecca Haven, named in honor of Noah's wife. Given that Noah originally wanted to call his project New Jerusalem, this became the name of the original settlement. Finally, the map delineates a NOAA National Park in the south in the area that corresponds to Beaver Island State Park today. The dotted lines show how Ararat's sovereignty is bordered by both Canada and the United States. The next postcard example is a souvenir of Ararat's most important tourist attraction, the Noah's Ark theme park. This two-dimensional image serves as the basis of the three-dimensional augment that stands as the entrance gate to the theme park. In this image, you see both the arc and the entrance sign as it is viewed through the smartphone on the augmented reality walking tour. The creation of this postcard and augment also mimes Grand Island's most important tourist attraction, the amusement park known as Martin's Fantasy Island that refers to itself as Western New York's most fun and affordable theme park. Coincidentally, this choice of name resident, resonates with our project, given that mapping Ararat inv involves the projection of a Jewish fantasy onto the very same island. 
One also notes that our postcard is an appropriation and alteration of an old Fantasy Island postcard circa 1960 that illustrates the original using this storybook theme. In each case, tourists are encouraged to send these postcards back from Ararat to us or to others. This not only adds an other interactive dimension to the project, it reanimates the performance of one of the gestures of tourism from the era of analog technologies. Given that postcards require stamps, we also created one that honors Mordecai Noah. But we've not had any success in circulating it through official channels. There's a website by the name of Zazzle that invites people to make their own custom stamps that can then be sent through the mail as a United States postage. We thought it would be just amazing to adhere these NOAA stamps to our postcards so that people could have the opportunity to send them from Grand Island. While it appears to be quite all right to use personal snapshots of your dog or yourself, there are strict limits as to what can pass by the postage sensors. Unfortunately, our submission of a Mordecai Noah stamp was rejected and considered an inappropriate use for two reasons. For one thing, uh, the custom stamp cannot incorporate, quote, a celebrity, current, or former leader, politician, religious figure, convicted criminal, or notorious person or other famous person's name or likeness, close quote. As a public and historical figure, Mordechai Noah was deemed to be a person who falls into this category. Secondly, we, um, we were informed in a personal email that our stamped verge on forgery and the production of counterfeit postage. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, hacking, yeah. Uh, quote, one of these restrictions prohibits the printing of any postage that emulates any form of valid indicia or payment for postage or is a reproduction of any postage stamp issued by the United States Postal Service at any time. Perhaps this was a backhand compliment <laughs> and recognized the fine craftsmanship that went into this vernacular cultural artifact and its simulation of statehood. All in all, the failure to get our custom-made Mordecai Noah stamp approved by Zazzle so that it could circulate as genuine American postage offers an ironic commentary on our imaginary Jewish homeland's lack of sovereign power. <laughs> and finally, we'll conclude with a video presentation that's a work in progress. It consists of a number of augmented reality walking tour clips in order to give you a better sense of how, with iPads in hand, we are using the new technology of augmented reality to track down Grand Island's Jewish ghosts. Welcome to Ararat. What is the purpose of your trip today? This is the country which the Almighty has blessed, and in which Israel and Judah may repose in safety and happiness. When the presence of many Jewish immigrants in this country shall dissipate all doubts, then my motives and objects will have been duly estimated and rewarded. Mordecai Noah, 1825. Please present your passport. Do you have any gifts? The time has come for this great people to gather again and raise itself up and become one of the leading nations of the world.
Please check online at our congregation's website for high holiday service times. New congregants are welcome. I shall not fail in the project I have undertaken, and shall settle a small congregation on Grand Island, from which tender plant may in time spring up a goodly and flourishing tree. Mordechai Noah, October 22, 1825 The great, omnipotent, and omnipresent God, do I commit the destinies of Israel and pray that he may have all in his safe and holy keeping.